what's happening YouTube we're going through the uh, ham radio license manual we already just finished chapter one and we just kind of want to go over and talk about we're gonna kind of we're just gonna go through it and talk about what what we learned and uh, it's basically just a short an introduction to uh, ham radio what do you think of it Joe you, I what, liked it what do you remember um a lot like what <laughs> <laughs> I don't know um yeah yeah Okay, well, uh, <laughs> we highlighted some stuff. Um, what was it here? Amateur is amateur radio is recognized as a national asset. You know, I never realized, thought about ham radio as being uh, a national asset, but some people that I've talked to, Dan the Man, the Swede, who you'll meet sometime, but I've talked talking to him and he was like boy these ham operators they're respected you know they're cut above the rest you know because they do a lot of good things you know i just thought well that's interesting you know uh hams are very inventive that's something else i've i've learned uh I think of Bob Heil, who invented the uh, Heil talk box, and uh, doing a lot of soldering and, you know, making all these widgets, and uh, very creative individuals, which is, uh, which is exciting for me because I like being creative and doing things although I don't uh, I, I don't think I do as much as I could I don't think I live up to my potential so hopefully this is going to encourage uh, encourage that me develop my creativity and his it's a good outlet Uh, in, during the 1970s, amateurs built an extensive network of relay repeaters. So, you know, I, I know, at least in America, CBs were very popular in the 1970s. Uh, I remember just everybody had them. I mean, my best friends, moms, they were on the ambulance service. And uh, she had scanners and radios and stuff there. And I know uh, some people that have passed on and they were very much into the CBs back then. It was just a, a very vibrant culture, the, the radios. And so to see in the 1970s, the ham people were, were uh, developing a pretty extensive infrastructure of repeaters and relay towers. Another thing I found that was very interesting is the personal computer and the uh, and the way that it's being used in uh, in the ham fields. The personal computer, as in many other fields, gave amateurs a powerful new tool for design, modeling, station automation, and record keeping, as well as making amateur radio computer networks of a reality. Fully, the internet arrived and hams quickly adapted the new technology to their own uses just as they had many times before uh you know i just i, I that's interesting to me i'm not big on computers i uh i don't like to sit still i like to be doing something I, I always say I'm doing something in the real world. I'm not sitting on the on the computer and uh, staring at a piece of glass. But there's more to it than that. And uh, I'm a little too harsh on 
some people. But uh, another thing here, that's why it's called amateur radio. Um, it means you can't talk with a co-worker. Here, this is just a, it's one of the little blurbs on the side. In order to keep business or municipalities from unfairly exploiting the amateur bands, amateurs are strictly forbidden from receiving compensation for their activities. That means you can't talk to a co-worker about an assignment, for example. If you provide communications for a parade or chari charity activity, you can't accept a fee. This keeps radio amateurs free to explore and improve and train. It's worked well for many years. Ham Radio Today. Hams have created their own wireless data networks, position reporting systems, and even a radio-based email network that enables the most solitary ham to log in from anywhere in the world. Need I say more? That's, that's pretty cool, you know, that you got uh, email connections. I don't know a lot. I, I don't know anything about it. I'm just learning. You guys are watching the development here. And uh, I don't know if that email network would really, if you could go to our email address, bitcoin4litecoin at gmail.com. If you have uh, the ability to send emails from... Uh, from your ham radio that would be really cool for me to get an email from you on that on that website I'll make a video about that if I ever get that that uh, email but I'll be looking for it and waiting for it and I can't wait to get it that'll be something really neat uh, computers are a big part of ham radio today as ham chat keyboard to key hams chat keyboard to keyboard or send pictures via radio. You'll find some hams assembling their own TV stations and trans transmitting professional quality video. I think I've already kind of encountered that with Ham Nation on YouTube with Bob Heil. Uh, I don't know what the heck they were doing, but it was I, I gathered that the video feed that you were watching on the YouTube was a... Uh, which was a uh, ham transmission, so I think that's pretty cool. There are many amateur radio satellites whirling through orbit. Um, who can be a ham? Oh, this is a cool thing. There are also thousands of people with disabilities for whom ham radio is a new window to the world. Yeah, can you imagine that? I mean... I live in a truck. I'm always out going places. I've, and when I'm not driving a truck, when I was driving over the road, I'd come home and we'd say, I'd say, let's go for a ride. You know, when I get out of the truck, I like to jump on a motorcycle and go for a ride. Or I just like riding around, you know. I just like movement. So if something happened to where I couldn't move around, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> Probably so messed up that you won't even know. Yeah, but that's cool that uh, that you know, you know, if you're wheelchair bound and you're stuck in your house and somebody's bringing you food and you can't even go to the store, you know, you've got an out with ham radio. That's awesome. Musicians: Patty Loveless, KD4WUJ, Joe Walsh, WB6ACU. I love Patty Loveless. I love Joe Walsh. You know? Uh, Joe Taylor. Joe Rudy. You know, some famous people that, uh, that are in there. You want to talk about this, bud? Um, you thought that was pretty interesting, didn't you? Yeah. Um... This guy named Richard contacted 500 different hams um, in 12 days when he was up in space. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So most of the astronauts are ham operators. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you got a picture of him here. There's a picture of him. 
in space. You know, I think that's cool. Well, what else? Hams also love the musicality of the code. Like the uh, Ham Nation uh, intro was written by Joe Walsh. And uh, I get into that. Uh, I, I'm, I really want to learn Morse code. We, we downloaded an app from our phone to, for learning Morse code. And, uh, you know, that was pretty neat. I want to learn Morse code. You know, I'm not for the dumbing down and making things every, you know, simple for everybody. You know, things, some things need to be challenging and some things need to be hard, you know. And, uh, you know, there's a benefit for working hard for something. And, uh, you know, we're already, I'm, we're already talking, we're going to learn Morris code and we want to be proficient in that. Hams have a build-it-yourself ethic called homebrewing. I like homebrew. But, uh, <laughs> it's a different kind of homebrew. <laughs> but, uh, no, the, the, the big reason why I want him to get into the radio stuff is for this homebrewing mentality where you fix your own stuff and and uh, make it operational, you know. You know, some of my other videos, you see me throwing Joe under the truck, making him, making him do uh, the dirty work, you know. But that's to get his hands on. I want him to, you know. I think the most valuable people in the world are the people who repair things and make things work, you know. Anybody can use something that somebody else made. But when it breaks, if you can't fix it, you're done, you know, and I've, you know, I've worked, you know, driving a truck, I go from different places to different place. And I, I've just learned that, you know, the indisposable people are the people that fix things and repair things. So I like that homebrewing ethic in, uh, in, uh, ham radio and I wanted to, you know, instill that into him because I don't fix as much as I could uh, you know I don't know I'm not much of a tear it down and fix it guy but I need to be and I'm gonna push I'm gonna develop that in myself uh, ATV amateur television and there are even ATV transmitters flying in model aircrafts and balloons that ascend to the edge of space don't know anything about that. That's all it said. But yeah, put an antenna on uh, on a balloon and send it up in the sky. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? What do you think, Joe? Mm. Anything? No. Uh, you know, the FCC is charged with administrating... All of the radio signals transmitted by U.S. radio stations. Um, QTH means what's your location. QTH and CB, you know, what's your 20, where you at, man? Uh, so QTH is the same thing as your 20 with the CB. Technicians... Technician licenses are granted privileges on the radio airwaves referred to as the VHF and UHF bands and a few privileges on the HF bands. You'll learn what those terms mean as you study. Good, because I don't really know what they mean. <laughs> I saw it on the, on, the, uh, on the striker that I bought. I just talked about that. Yeah. Or you can talk about it. No, I don't know. <laughs> Listening to a skilled Morse code operator is quite a treat. I bet it is if you know what the heck's going on. Ever. <laughs> One of the most important functions repeated three times in the list above is to, is to relay communications. It is no coincidence that the third letter in the ARRL stands for Relay, the American Radio Relay League. So, you know, that's, that's passing the passing the the uh, message on, right? 
So I, I envision you having getting your ham radio and in your bedroom, having that thing will run a tower up on a chimney or something. We live kind of down in a hill, so it's going to be hard to get out. Yeah, valley. Yeah, we downhill. We're going downhill. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything's going downhill. Collecting these colorful certificates and other prizes can be addictive. What do you think about that? They got these. <laughs> they got contests and stuff, you know, contact different 20 states, the Oscar Satellite Communication Achievement Award, contact different states. That sounds kind of fun and kind of dorky at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest, you know. But whatever, you know. I mean that but that but I think the the uh it's not just to, you know, hey, I contacted 20 people in 20 states. It's basically it's a way to develop those skills of, you know, getting signals out and, you know, practice. And so you do it in a fun way, a contest, you know, and then you get a little certificate and so that's cool. That is cool. So that's really what it's comes off as maybe a little nerdy or dorky or something like that. But it's actually, there's a purpose behind it. You know, the competition develops your skills. Packet radio. Do you know about packet radio? I don't understand it. But it's a special kind of data interface called a terminal node controller, TNC takes characters from a computer and repackages them into data packets which are transmitted by a regular unmodified radio usually on the VHF or UHF, UHF bands. That would be the technicians, not ours because we're not technicians someday. <clears throat> so, packet radio, it's another, another uh, way that uh, the... Uh, computers are mixing with ham it's kind of interesting and the way uh, GPS and uh, was it APRS automatic packet reporting system so they're taking GPS locations and sending them out I don't quite understand it Maybe I'll read the highlighted part and it'll refresh it in my head again. Other users can log on to the APRS servers and find the location of anyone sending position data by tracking their movements on maps of various detail levels. It's fascinating. My mind ain't there, so it's not as fascinating as it was when I was reading it. <laughs> Meteor scatter and EME. Now that is fascinating to me because I remember it what it was. The trail of a meteor can reflect radio signals during the few seconds it lasts. A skilled amateur can use the trail to, to make short contacts. The biggest reflectors in the sky the biggest reflector in the sky is the moon and hams can bounce their signals off the moon and hear them when they complete the round trip back to earth. Cool. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, this is huge. <laughs> you can use a calculator during the exam. <laughs> we were both like, <laughs> the technician questions question pool is completely rewritten every four years I don't buy it because I was listening to an older uh, YouTube video something that FCC is uh, regulating the uh, airwaves under section 97 right something like that it's it and that was in the old book and it's in there and some of the uh, other questions that I heard that guy give you know were like verbatim the same but you know whatever I think they're just trying to scare you 
Smells like bullshit to me. <laughs> Shouldn't do that. Sorry. <laughs> you can't scare me. So you excited, Joe? Mm-hmm. Done with chapter one? Bud? <laughs> I keep screwing that up. So much for privacy. <laughs> so what do you think, Joe? If you haven't looked yet, check our playlists. Get on the playlist and... Uh, what's the playlist? It, what's the playlist? The playlist, if you go to my channel, my YouTube channel, or our YouTube channel, it's my, more mine, but uh, it's ours. It's, it's mine. <laughs> but if you go into my channel, and I don't know how to tell you how to get there, but I know I've... You can't do it from a cell phone, but if you're on a computer and you're dinking around in there, you can get to my playlist, and there are uh, there's some playlists there that you can go through and watch all the videos in order about ham radio and uh, different things that I think are interesting or whatever. So go to the playlist and check that out. What else, Joe? What do you got? Do I have someone? Subscribe. Oh, yeah. Comment. You know, ask questions, get the dialogue going. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Always appreciate a thumbs up, and we give you a big old thumbs up. Thumbs up. See ya.